Well, at least these sets of videos are uploaded consistently, even though that they're not really uploaded on the day they're supposed to, but I'm still getting them up. Have you thought about disassembling your latch cube? Yeah, I have taken it apart a little bit. It's like very stiff though. You have to use something to pry out a piece, but it works just like a normal 3x3. It's just built to not have any intolerance. You know how it works is it just has these little latches that as you turn a layer, it just goes pop down into it. And it's just, and it's a very simple mechanism. And I'll go into that when I do eventually do make the review of this thing. It's not the Shang Shao plus X cube 6x6. It's just the Shang Shao. Yeah, that's what I thought. I probably should have double check that before I said it myself. What's your opinion on the Rubik's Magic? Well, I honestly haven't gotten it because all the new puzzles that come out just take my attention away from all the old puzzles that came out long ago. Also, I never thought I'd be interested in it because it wasn't like a normal twisty puzzle, but people really speed solve with it, so maybe it is fun to flip around and turn and such. So I may get it sometime, who knows. I'm just a 10 year old and I sub 16. I am going to nationals and I'm practicing 50 to 80 solves per event. Do you think I should pull back a little bit? Do you have a social life at all? But admittedly, I may be doing the same thing if I were going to competitions regularly. You don't like the Zanchi? I was being sarcastic. How much time would switching from two look to full OLL save me? Would you say it's worth to memorize them? Well, it all depends on how fast you want to get at the Rubik's Cube. I mean, the only difference is, is that you apply one algorithm over having to apply two algorithms, so it'll shut off a few seconds that way. Also, it would probably shut off more seconds because you're simply practicing the cube more to keep all 50 of those algorithms down. Take apart your Terraminx now! I know it's just I ran out of time on Saturday and uh, I'll try to get it up this Saturday. I will try. What's your favorite PLL? Well, I thought about this for a few minutes and I don't think I have one. When I pick up a cube, I scramble it and I solve it. You know, I don't really apply a PLL that I like a lot. You know, I think I like all of them except the G perms equally, so I really don't know what to say. How long were you cubing before you started making videos? Or did you cube after you made videos? I think I started playing with our old family 8mm camera of November of 2007. And I started recording some family videos with it, and then that Christmas after that I was given a 4x4. And short, and then in January I put up a short little video which I have since removed. <laughs> like, I started making YouTube videos as well as I started cubing like right around the same time. If not, then within a month of each other. Do you sell modified V-Cube 6s? Well, I did several of them this summer, and unfortunately they were only gluing in pins, so I wasn't able to make my tutorial. So the very earliest I would start modifying them would be at least Christmas break. But whether or not I'll be still interested in doing it then is to be determined. Will the V-Cube 4 be clicky? Probably not. Considering that several companies have already figured out how to keep that inner layer in alignment, I'm guessing that when the V-Cube company releases uh, V-Cube 4, that they will have figured out their own way to keep it in alignment themselves. You know, the V-Cubes were announced about five years before they were finally released, so after many delays, I'm sure they wanted to get the first 6x6 out there and then worry about trying to make the fastest 6x6 out there. And that's all the cubing questions I have for today, and now for normal ones. Are you a fan of Justin Bieber? Well, I said last week that I really wasn't much of a fan of music, so of course I'm not a fan of him. I do find it interesting that he got his start on YouTube, though. Are you in the Partners Program? Yes, I am. And for those of you who don't know, the Partners Program is for people who really get into YouTube. So for people who are accepted into the program, they can start putting ads on their videos and get the majority of the revenue from them. They also get features like putting a banner above their videos, one on their channel, a little side column image, and a few other features as well. There's also a monetization program where you can get the ads on your videos, just not any of the partner features. That's currently what my second channel, Me, Myself, and Movies, has. And finally, there's individual video partnership, where YouTube will send automated invites to people who have popular videos, and they can put ads on just that video themselves. Has anything crazy happened to the Golden Corral? Well, apart from freezing pipes bursting, lady being escorted to the hospital, I don't remember what the reason was for. A bomb scare, as well as one or two fires that would have been quickly extinguished. Yeah, there's been some exciting things that have happened. Of course, you know, it's not like I have my camera ready to capture these moments. But I'm sure exciting stuff like that happens to every restaurant, not just the Golden Corral. What do you like making better? Comment responses, reviews, or your entertainment videos? Well, it's easy for me to do my comment response videos because I think it's just, it takes so little effort to do it. However, 
I have been getting tired of making these videos simply because it's just the same thing over and over and over again. So I do enjoy making my reviews or entertainment videos a lot more simply because there's a lot of new stuff to do in those. But those take a lot more motivation to start doing because I'm not familiar with it, so... So I suppose between those factors, they kind of cancel each other out? Well, I don't know. I think you misunderstood the speed stacks question. I think they're referring to the actual speed stacking. Oh, oops, that's what they meant? Oh, well, would I ever get into speed stacking? Well, I don't know. You know, for me to get into a hobby, usually there has to be specific circumstances that gets me my interest involved in it. I don't think I would try out a new hobby simply for the sake of trying it out. Though at Golden Crowd the other day, I was kind of tempted to start trying it when I was stacking some cups. What's your opinion of how Dan Brown is doing? Well, for those of you that don't know, he tried out this whole thing he called Dan 3.0, where he had people vote on tasks for him to do, and it just didn't work out for him. And well, my opinion on that is it seemed like a good idea at the time. And as he said at VidCon, probably someone could make it work if they did it a little bit differently. Like maybe a way to filter out, you know, like little goofy tasks. Like, I don't know. It seemed like a good idea. But I think what his main problem was is that he had a hard time committing to it. Yeah. <laughs> What's in the metal box on your left? Okay, since you guys keep asking about it, it's just it's just a little plastic safe. It has it's a little coin sorter. And I simply put it on the bed simply to make room to put my light on the dresser above. It's not really a big deal. Which video editing software did you use before you got After Effects? Well, After Effects is more for a clip by clip basis, and with Final Cut and Adobe, I believe you can just import a clip from one program to another and then back again. That's not terribly hard to do with those programs, but currently I've been using Cyberlink PowerDirector. And for me, if I want to do any edits before I bring it into After Effects, then I have to render it and then import it in and then render the After Effects project and then bring it back into PowerDirector. So that's kind of a pain. So I... Sometime in the future, I would like to get Adobe Premiere. You know, the reason why I've been hanging on to PowerDirector so long is its user-friendliness, and it's just really hard to transition from a software that's made for user-friendliness to a software that isn't so user-friendly. You know, eventually I'd like to do it, but yeah, sometime. WMV is not the most compressed format. MPEG-4 is. It is? Really? Well, in my software, it's always been smaller. Huh. There must be a bitrate setting I haven't looked into. Thanks, I'm gonna have to check that out. Didn't you suspect that your schedule wouldn't work out so good? Oh yes, I did. And e in my first video when I announced what I'd be doing this summer, I said that there, there would be a downtime where I just wouldn't feel like making videos. And I feel like I'm in that downtime now. And it's just kind of sad that the end of the summer is approaching, but hopefully I can bring it up again. <laughs> but I feel that this experience I'm getting from this summer is very valuable, and maybe during next summer, if I take the summer off from school, then maybe things will work out better. Are you suggesting 12-year-olds can't make good quality videos? No, what I meant is that they're not as likely to make good quality videos. If a 10-year-old started making videos, then he probably would be making decent quality ones by 12. But my main point in that video is, like, if I started making videos when I was 12, then I'd certainly be making better videos now than if I had started when I did. Do you have any phobias? Man, why so many thumbs up? No, I don't believe I have any. I do suffer from a few annoyances, like dropping cubes off of a roof, cubes popping, and my ability to get my videos up on time. Have you ever played Minecraft? Nope. And I don't know if it's a modern game or not, but I gave up games, I think, about two years ago. And the only games that I've played is, like, Command and Conquer Generals, Battle, Star Wars Battlefront, the first one, and Civilization III. I think those have been really the only games that my brother and I have really gotten into. You know, it's just that we don't really want to take the time to learn any new games because yeah, we probably get addicted then. Okay, and that's the last of the comments I have here, but ooh, one that I forgot to pick out is a lot of people have been asking me about a giveaway now since Red KB uploaded his giveaway video. And as I said way back a long time ago is that I may do something like that at the end of the summer, and I'm, I, I'm planning on doing something by the end of the summer. Something like a giveaway, something special like a giveaway, something exciting. I don't know if it'll be a giveaway yet, 
but you can expect something. Oh, and one other thing is that the company that makes my video editing software, PowerDirector, they are hosting a video contest where they're giving away like some really nice cameras. And I went ahead and uploaded a video on my second channel titled The Great Sand Dunes. So you guys can feel free to check out the contest. I've put a link to it in below. After you click on that link, click on the View and Vote tab, and that will display the latest videos that have been uploaded. So you guys can vote or Facebook like the videos that you like the most. If you'd like to check out my video directly, I've also put a link to that in the description. And it is actually pretty rare for me to enter a contest unless I have a decent chance. I mean, that's how I won this Rubik's Slide. It was a little contest on the Twisty Puzzle forums. And with that, I have everything I need to say in this video. If you guys found it entertaining, you may also like to check out last week's video or even next week's video when I upload it. Or if you even want to be notified of when videos like these are uploaded, then you can subscribe above. Thanks for watching, everyone.